Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you today about reactive power conversions. I've been thinking about it a lot after my little chat I had with Bedini the other day. Uh, more on that in another video if you're interested. No, I'm not crazy. So anyways, um, after uh, reflecting on um, some uh, information that was exchanged and what I've already talked about, trying to make sense of it all, I started doing some calculations here and uh, just running some things online and trying to figure out. I've already played with this before and I've explained the importance of it. And uh, reactive power is really good. You essentially put a capacitor in series with your AC. I primarily use it just to lower the uh, current to like 40 milliamps or so efficiently to get a near zero trigger without having to pay very much for it, without too much consideration and tuning. I don't really care because, you know, who cares if I only get 20% uh, of it back or not at 40 milliamps. I'm not really going to... Um, whine about it but essentially uh, with reactive power in an LC circuit what made advantage of that is we could use resonance to increase the potential or in other words the whole reactive power which is expressed in VARs here volt amperage reactives so essentially um, in an LC circuit if we trigger it at the right trigger uh, we like for this example here. I'm using a capacitor of th 300 UF, and uh, the frequency 60 hertz. With the calculations of reactive power, we know that it's going to be about 15.5 watts of trigger or real power, essentially, to add that capacitance to trigger the reactive the LC downs here. So what happens is. Um, in the regular um, LC circuit, once you do get that resonant point, it only works at the LC stage. So in, in, in relation with oscillating capacitors and induction coils. So a lot of people already know this. You increase this VAR value, but it's contained within that circuitry itself. As soon as you try and tap into this, it's not compatible with our regular power. You can't get this gain natively and run a load on it, unfortunately. So what would normally happen in most circumstances if resonance is not a tuned factor, your, your power basically goes down to near that. So there's still nothing wrong if you're looking for an efficient way of dropping the power, this is a way to go, but we want to take advantage of the reactive power at resonance if we actually had these given values here. Because obviously at resonance, if we do the math here, the ratio is great, 88.39. So essentially the reactive power, even though as it's on like that, we can't do anything with it, it's still 88.39 times greater than the input power we're using to triggering. That's a massive gain if only somehow we can tap into this. But as many people know, all you do is touch an LC circuit and it goes out of whack and you lose that effect right away. Can't do anything with it. Can't really put a diode on it. No semiconductors, nothing, unless you expect to get that drop, which will give you closer to here, which is still fine. But we lost our, our you know, what our intent was to try and so. What we have to do is, in Bedini terms, is we have to transduce this energy back into something. So this becomes displacement current between an LC circuit and oscillating. So what happens is, to, in order to be able to keep this power, the whole circuitry that we're taking advantage of this power needs to be only LC circuits within that stage. Anything else is going to basically kill this so how do we do it i thought about it and i was pretty close with the way i drew the uh, original circuit so i will show you folks basically how this could be done pretty easily resonance is the key so i'm going to draw this quickly here with normal looking transformers but one would optimally have to maybe down the line build their own transformers for this which by the way at these gains is really worth it it's, it's a bit you know a little bit of complication but for a great reward so let's start off here with our 110 ac input here so we're gonna have 
or AC here. So we're going to have a um, variable transformer. Well, we know I call it variac, but you're going to use the variable winding here of the variable inducer here. And you're going to have your reactive cap right here, okay? Now essentially what we'd want to do, what, what the mind wants to do is close the loop like this, right? And then take the given math and figure, well, 88 point some percent gain. So all we have to do is, you know, put a rectifier here. And then there, there you go, voila, here's my uh, one kilowatt load. That's what we want to do with it, right? But that's not what would happen if we were to, by because we're directly coupling into it, it's going to go, whoa, we're going to lose that reactive power. It's not compatible with regular power. We have to transduce it first. So the only way to do that is to stick with pure LC circuits and magnetics. It's the only way that we're not going to interfere with what an LC circuit does during a reactive stage. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're simply going to add, again, the variable inducer here, but we're going to have our capacitor here, like this, but we're going to have an additional set of inducers here, and strategically place right, you're going to have to research this because I'm not 100% on the configuration here, but it's called inductive rectification. So what happens is the output of these secondaries here are wired in a specific way here, which will allow for your DC. So you're using magnetics to rectify to DC. So there you have a charging capacitor, let's say 100 UF on here, that dumps into your charging batteries. Now by doing it this way, see folks, you're no longer, I know the drawing looks bad here, but what I'm getting at is by keeping it all coils and capacitors on the loop here, it's just a matter of finding that new resonant point through your variable here. And once you do that, you'll be able to use that reactive power because it's displacement current. You're interacting completely with displacement currents of the loop here. And you're using magnetics to rectify the, this, the reactive power, converting it with a capacitor, charging it up and continuously dumping it, or several of them at this case, because it's going to be a high output system. So basically what this means is it's just a matter, folks, of finding the resonant point, sticking with pure magnetics, using a reactive power supply, very high capacitance, 200, 300 UF or more. So the more capacitance you have, the more um, input you need trigger. It's still going to be low, 15 watts for like, I'm going to have these slides here for you because there's so much I couldn't um, remember it all. But uh, let's see here. Practical conversion, right? Let's say we have only 90% efficiency. So 90% efficiency here. And the real power output, we're going to divide that. This is what we're assuming here, which is like totally wrong. So this is crude, by the way, but the point is just to show you, you know, the difference here of the practical gain. I'm not even sure about the watts here because uh, this is reactive power. But anyways, uh, my point is even at a 90% drop, you're still doing pretty good here. So, um, yeah, I guess it is watts. Okay. So that's a lot. You see what I'm getting at? 15 but there's always going to be some losses, so, but even so, right, so you, you might, real world application, we might need 
50 watts from an inverter, regular 12 volt inverter, have this massive reactive stage and feed it back into it, it'll work. I mean, that's crazy, but uh, there's a lot of power to play here if we can tap into it without getting directly in, without interfering with the reactive stage. And the only way to do that is you can only have capacitors and in inducers on that loop. Anything else will interfere with it. And of course, the load on the uh, rectified side, which is the capacitor, will take into consideration what you're tuning. You'll be able to observe the sweet spot with that into consideration. But, you know, this is a big one, and it seems like... I mean, um, very good anyways, it's just, I, I actually think I'm going to start experimenting with this because it seems pretty straightforward now that I, um, I just got to figure out the whole rectification using magnetics. I mean, it's apparently old like dirt, there's some documents about it. So we'll do that and see where it goes. So I hope you enjoy and let me know what your thoughts are and have yourselves all a great day, folks.